We are on a mission to prove that everyone is completely capable of recycling plastic at home themselves. There seems to be a bit of a myth that recycling only really happens behind closed doors in big factories with loads of equipment, but it's not really the case. It's actually simple enough to do that you can grab something you already have at home to make something useful and fun out of plastic waste. And literally, anyone can do it. So we've been having a little look around online for something secondhand that we think a lot of people might have, and within about 10 minutes, we found this little air fryer, and we figured it's worth a go. We've not tried an air fryer before, but it sounds like it might work. Why not? Let's go get it. <laughs> Matt has done some beautiful haggling. I think it was up at, how much is that for? 25. Got it for? 20. Oh yeah. How was it? Nice and clean. Beautiful. Lovely. This obviously has a bunch of holes in the bottom. Yeah, all the plastic's gonna fall through, innit? When we're melting in the oven, we're always using a little tray, aren't we? Yeah, so, so we need something to like put in there, don't we? So it doesn't fall through. Should we go to a supermarket and go find a tin or a, yeah, we'll find something. Yes. Plummy Toms. Tootle. Tootle. Plummy Toms. Feels a bit short, doesn't it? That was pretty good. Is that the one? I think that's the best we're going to get. Not only burgers. <laughs> it can't be burgers. Oh, mm. Nice. Lunch sorted. Back to the workshop and uh, burgers then plastic melting. <laughs> Beautiful. So there we go. We've got our air fryer. We've got our melting vessel slash lunch. Mmm. Should we hold off on eating lunch for a bit? We will eat them. I don't want them to go to waste. We'll plate them up, chuck them in the fridge, and just get this clean, and then we'll have our delicious lunch. As a little treat. <laughs> right, let's give it a go. There you go. Oh, wow. Oh. Right, so we've spent a bit of time getting rid of all the labels and the glue, so that tin is now nice and clean. So now we've just got to line it with something so that the plastic doesn't stick to it when it's melting. We were thinking of using baking paper, but we were on a call with our patrons the other day, and one of them very cleverly pointed out that it could easily catch fire, so thank you for that tip, Catherine. So instead, we're gonna be using these Teflon baking sheets and cutting it to shape so that it sits nicely in the tin. It's gone surprisingly well. Yeah, it has actually gone very well, hasn't it? Right, so we're gonna get the air fryer warmed up. But because we don't fully trust this little dial to be exactly accurate, we're going to chuck a thermometer in there as well. That'll give us a good indication if the HTP is actually getting to the right temperature. See if it works. So for this, we're going to be working with HTP. So it's things like milk bottle tops, detergent bottles, shampoo bottles, basically anything with a triangle with a number two in it. That's because it's got a nice low melting point, so it's perfect for this kind of thing. So let's drop one in there and see if it works. That's exactly how it looks on the panini press. Oh, what's the temperature like? Where are we? It says 170, and on the dial, we're on, oh, 170. Okay. Decent, right, let's chuck a few more in. See how that goes. That is looking great. Beautiful. Sweet. So that works extremely well. I'm very surprised about that, but the video has to be a bit more interesting than us buying an air fryer and melting four bottle tops. So we're not done? No, we're not done. So we need to make something out of said plastic. So in preparation of us being clever enough to actually make this work, we asked our Instagram audience what they think we should make out of the plastic from the air fryer. Because it's an air fryer, we thought something for the kitchen uh, that can't be anything that touches food, just for food safety reasons. These are some of the fabulous responses we got. Chip clips, the things that kind of, yeah, keep your bag closed. That was a really popular choice. Um, I, I actually think that'd be a really cool product to make. Yeah. Might be slightly better suited to injection molding. Yeah, the little sort of plastic hinge might be tricky to do with yeah. a, a basic mold we're looking to make for this. Uh, again, quite a lot of big things. We had like kitchen backsplash was quite a cool one. Really cool, Spice yeah. Spice rack, but the only issue with that is that obviously the air fryer is quite small and we're gonna be quite limited to how much we can fit in it. So one of the small uh, suggestions that we really liked was this one, bottle opener for opening beers. Or, really cool idea. Or other non-alcoholic drinks with yeah. a metal cap. So what we did is we went on uh, Amazon and we found this little device, which is a <laughs> device. The bottle opener kit with a little threaded part that you can screw into something. And we thought we could probably make a handle of yeah. some sort. It works really nicely because we can just make a fairly simple looking mold, shape it a little bit just with a knife and then screw that into place. Off camera, we used a load of scrap wood that we had lying around in our offcuts bin. We made a quick mold. This is 
super chunky because it shrinks a lot and warps. If it's nice and robust, it means you can use it over and over again as well. Yeah, we've had some molds we've used like 20, 30 times. So big chunky mold that should give us a nice kind of chunky handle size, it's obviously oversized, and then we can shape it and make it look a little bit nice and ergonomic. But that should do the job, hopefully. So one thing we always get asked is how to work out the amount of plastic you need when you've got a new mold. The simple way of doing it is just working out the dimensions of this, which is four by, we're hoping for a depth of four by 15. So four times four times 15 is 240. And essentially that's the amount of grams of plastic that you need. So 240 grams, you can add sort of five or 10% for wastage. So Shrink, it shrinks a bit, so add we, a little bit more. Yeah, we've got about 260 grams here. So we've got like maybe 10 or 15 grams in there, not much, just from when we tested it and made sure it works. Now it definitely works. We're gonna get all of this in there and get it melted. It is, I think like minus two, minus three at the moment. Ooh, hello, get in here. Nice. So one thing that is worth noting is that you wanna make sure you're in a nice ventilated space. We've got massive high roofs here. If you can open windows, open your garage doors. Work outside. The other thing we would recommend is that we've obviously gone out and picked up this air fryer specifically for this project. Don't use your home air fryer, mainly because if you get any plastic stuck in there and then someone whacks the temperature all the way up to cook some food, then it will burn the plastic and then that becomes carcinogenic. So. Use a dedicated machine. They're super cheap secondhand these days. You can get them anywhere. It's better than our actual heater. <laughs> it does compress Pats a lot, doesn't it? All right, it's feeling pretty good. It is handy getting a tin that's just a little bit lower than the top of yeah. your air. That was very good that we did do that. That was well done. It was. It was. I felt jealous like I was gonna go get the other glove and do it, but then. Do it, treat yourself. So plastic's just heating for hopefully its final time, then we're gonna get it in here, but you need to add loads of pressure because the plastic shrinks. So in order to do that, you can use a vise, you can use a press, you can use whatever you can to keep it nice and easy and kind of accessible. You're just gonna use a couple of clamps chuck it on the corner of the table like this, clamp on each side and keep pressing it. And every couple of minutes, we're gonna come back and press it a little bit more to counteract that shrinkage. Here we go, let's work quickly. Okay, shape it roughly into a kind of cylindrical blob. Oh, that's good. Right, I need clamping help, John. I think that's looking good. Right, let's go have some lunch. So for us, turning plastic waste into new things isn't just a fun way of doing our bit for the planet, but it's also nice just to learn new things. And on the topic of new things, the sponsor of today's video allows you to dive deep into the wonders of our world and beyond. Curiosity Stream offers exclusive content that sets it apart from other streaming services. With award-winning and original documentary films, shows, and series, it's an incredible library of content that you won't find anywhere else. And they cover a whole range of stuff, anything from military history to science to nature and technology. They've got something for everyone on there, and we love the fact that they've got new content drops every single week, keeping things fresh and exciting. <laughs> Unlike these. Starting at less than $5 a month, it's a super budget-friendly option that gives you immediate access to thousands of hours of high-quality documentaries. As you can imagine, one of our favourite topics is nature, and particularly our climate. We've been hooked on the Journey to a New Earth series, which explores the challenges that our global waters face and the collaborative solutions that are emerging. So if you're ready to embark on your own curiosity journey, go to curiositystream.com forward slash brothersmake or scan the QR code for unlimited access. And for our viewers, you can use code brothersmake to get 25% off an annual subscription. Big thank you to Curiosity Stream for supporting our channel. That is absolutely enough of these burgers. Let's go back to the classic. So we left the plastic in the mold overnight to cool and then in the morning it popped out really nicely and we could quickly trace on our shape using a paper template that we'd made. Now since this was a fairly chunky blank, we decided we would get rid of the bulk of the material with a saw, and the nice thing about working with plastic is that pretty much any woodworking tools will work fine. 
Now obviously any sort of shaping is gonna create waste, so we put a box underneath where we're working and that way we could catch all the shavings and offcuts to be used later on. At this point it was still feeling quite chunky, so we decided to cut some bigger parts off and this way we got our first look at some of the awesome marble colors of this multicolor plastic. At this point we also drilled the slightly undersized hole ready for the bottle opener to be screwed in later on. We did the majority of the shaping with a spoke shave, which helps us to soften all the edges and give it a bit more of a rounded feel. The less square the shape became, the harder it was to hold, so we decided to just screw the bottle opener in and then clamp that in our super jaws. As we got closer to the final shape, we did start to expose a couple of air bubbles, but since the whole thing felt a little bit too big, we just decided to trim it down and that sorted out the hole at the bottom. But for the hole at the top, we just decided to fill it. So we used a mini heat gun to heat the plastic up and then melted some offcuts in our air fryer again, and then squished them together once they were both hot. And once that was filled and trimmed, we continued with the final shaping until we got the look and feel of what we were going for. Now we always try to avoid sanding plastic as the fine particles tend to go everywhere, they're really hard to collect and even harder to reuse, so we just used a card scraper to take off the last of the saw marks. All of the waste caught in that bucket underneath gets collected up ready for a future project. And as a very final but optional step, we decided to give the handle a quick buff on our friction polishing mop, which helps to give it a little bit of a shine. So the question we set out to try and answer in this video was, can you use everyday household items to recycle plastic, in this case, an air fryer? And the answer, big drum roll, please. <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah, you can, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, I don't know why there's a drum roll for that. <laughs> They've just watched us do it successfully. So yeah, basically it works really well. It sits, we we're talking about this, and I think it sits somewhere between a panini press and an oven because yeah. it doesn't have the direct heat of a panini press. It's a little bit slower, but where it's a much smaller cavity, yeah, it's a much smaller works. space than an oven. It does heat up a lot quicker. So yeah, faster than an oven, a little bit slower than the panini press. And if you've got a bigger air fryer, like oh, we obviously just picked up a small one to test it out, but if you had a bigger, you get these giant like, two drawer, shove a whole chicken in their air fryers, can't you? <laughs> yeah. If you got one of them, you could do a pretty good pretty good amount of plastic, I yeah, reckon. Yeah, sure. In terms of the bottle opener itself, what do you reckon? To be yeah. fair, Matt did all the shaping, so I'll let you do this bit. Thanks. Well, yeah, I, we went for this kind of slightly tapered design just to try and make it a bit kind of ergonomic, nice to feel. It was a bit longer initially and it felt a bit bulky, didn't yeah, it? it did. So we uh, slimmed it down. The colors, I think, look really cool. Like, we just went for multicolored. We very rarely do multicolored. We yeah. usually go for like quite specific color yeah, blends. Two or three colors, but that actually looks I think it's really got, interesting. Yes, yeah, it's, it's fun if nothing else. I think a bottle opener really is a very good sort of entry level project for people to do, trying out recycling plastic for the first time. Those of you that have seen any of our previous videos may remember the video where we made recycled plastic pens. We actually took some of those pen blanks and turned it into a second bottle opener to do a comparison. Show a comparison. So if we were going to make these at scale, this is how we'd do it. And I actually think it's quite a nice little product. So if you did fancy one, just let us know. Or we can pop a few on our online shop. Lovely. Another thing that we are extremely excited about is recently, well, recently, for like three months, we've been working on these little cartoon oh, characters. Oh, the Patreon. The Patreon characters. So 
Again, there's no pressure at all to sign up for Patreon, but we do ask that you go and check out these little cartoons that we've been working on, because they're extremely cool. They're very cool. They're all based on us, because we're that vain. But there's three <laughs> levels. There's Eco Warrior, yep. Eco Hero, and Eco Legend. Yeah. And yeah, all, all varying different degrees. We just look really epic as little cartoon Vikings, I, basically. I think the Eco Warrior is the most accurate version of us, but <laughs> as you level up, you can get us, we turn to these like badass wizards and barbarians. badass wizard. Sure. <laughs> We've actually had our first ever Eco Legend, so a huge shout out goes to Jessica Greer. Thank you so much, Jessica. Legend, absolute Eco Legend. And an absolute massive shout out goes to the rest of the Brotherhood over there. They're all amazing in keeping us doing what we do. Thank keeping you. the lights on in the workshop and recycling the more plastic. Keeping smiles on these little faces. Well, thank you so much for watching the video and thank you to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring the video. Yep, big It's thanks. actually a really cool platform, so check it out. Should we have a beer with our new bottle opener? I might go have another burger. <laughs> oh my God. We felt sick for so long. I'm, I'm still sick now. See you later. Bye. Cheers. What's up?